Indigenous of Umalum and Umwoma communities in Nekede Oweri, West Local Government Area of Imo State, are calling on government to come to their aid and fix the dilapidated Otamiri Bridge. The residents say the bridge, which has been in a deplorable state for many years, is hampering trading activities between neighboring communities and causing economic hardship. Our community report tonight takes a look at the plight of these two communities. This is the ancient Otamiri Bridge linking Umwalum and Umwoma communities in Nekede, Oweri West local government area of Imo State. Villages here say it used to be a beehive of activity when the bridge was functional many years ago, but now it is characterized by silence. A lot of things have happened here because it's the shortest distance between us and the Umwalum community. When this road was functioning very well, all through the night, the road is busy. But now it has been exposed to danger. People at times are got attacked on this road. Children at times slip off and fall into the stream. Some they rescue them, some they go that way. We are students, you understand? So this is the only place that we can help us so close to our school area. It takes a lot of calculating and courage to maneuver this bridge, as the wood and steel used in building it are now feeble and are already collapsing. The people plead with government at all levels to respond to their plight. The traditional ruler of Umwama community, Morrison Eke, speaks for his people. Mostly we are farmers and uh, the importance of so that bridge cannot be overstressed because farmers, when they go to harvest their crops, they need to transport them to the market to sell. But most of the time, you discover that they cannot do it because of the distance and the cost of transportation. But when I came into... Uh, the lawmaker representing Oweri West State constituency in the House of Assembly, Honorable Innocent A.K., says efforts have been taken by the State House of Assembly to come to the aid of the people. Those efforts, it seemed, are yet to impact on their lives. When I was sworn in about four years ago, what I did was to move the house. <clears throat> By then, the, the erosion menace there was much. So we went to look at the erosion state, uh, the state of uh, uh, the erosion menace there. The house went on locus to look at it. After then, of course, that is largely uh, uh, an ecological matter where the attention of the federal government was drawn. I'm happy to say that it received some attention. If you go on that road now, you see that all those devastation by Goli erosion had been addressed. Uh, but one thing I am very convinced about is that sufficient attention had been drawn. And since work has started, it, it will surely uh, uh, be, be done. And, with a population of over 50,000 from the two communities, the economic importance of the bridge cannot be overemphasized. <laughs> Apart from the fact that the Federal Polytechnic, Nekede, is situated in this area, making student population very high, both communities are predominantly agrarian. Life had been very terrible for us because for us to get across to the neighboring community, if you are riding on a car, well, you have to pass through Oweri. That's covering about uh, 10 kilometers to get to the next community. But when the bridge was there, it could only take you some 10 minutes highest to get to the next community. And as long as the promises from authorities continue to pile up, so do hopes that they are fulfilled. And while hope persists, these communities continue to cope with the dilapidation. To more cherry news in the arts now. Transgression is a photo exhibition by George Ushudi at the Art House Space. It features over 20 images that capture the highs and lows in this uh, photo artist's career. 
Our trivia tonight takes a look at transgression. A crowd gathers to enjoy George Oshodi's exhibition, an opportunity to be a part of this journey, network with those in the arts, and also capture memories of their own. The shock factor that some of these images bring is written on their faces. From the grueling tale of environmental degradation seen in oil theft to gas flare is a wake-up call on the need to protect the environment and the bleak future that awaits those who fail to heed this call. To this intriguing picture, titled The Money, shot in the gold mine in Ghana where he explores the relationship between man and his environment, these laborers toil day and night to get this gold from Mother Earth but benefit little from nature's gift. A cultural icon, the masquerade used in many traditional events is showed here in several series. The mystery behind the masked creature that usually sends shivers down the spine of anyone it comes in contact with is given a human face as they strike a pose in front of mud houses. So all that horror may not be skin deep. There is also a wall dedicated to the royals. Uneasy lies the head that wears the crown, they say. We see some of their private moments in the line of duty. From the north to the south, there seems like a shared experience. Although their apparels and titles may differ, they have one thing in common, service to humanity. This documentation of monarchy is still a work in progress, as Oshodi hopes to continue documenting more of them. The beauty of Lagos, which the artist describes as an uncelebrated city, begins with the Carter Bridge, laced with streetlights that cast a shadow of a colorful nightlife, although in broad daylight, the houses that surround it may leave much to be desired. When the cold night births the morning sun, Lagosians wake up to mingle. The energy in the marketplace captures the hustle, an image filled with color, distorted a bit to create a unique sense of originality. Once again, the masked man appears in form of the Ayo Masquerade, a tradition popular in the mega city. All these are placed side by side. The masquerade breathes life and becomes a spectacle to behold, adding more glamour to an eventful night that has left an impression in the hearts of those who experienced it. It's a photograph of the uh, Calabar Carnival, and yet it's got the Chinese fan who have creatively sort of uh, putting together such colourful uh, background to make the photograph alive in the setting in which it's done. It's um, absolutely remarkable. I don't collect photographs, uh, but I do appreciate them. And this one's by George Oshodi are particularly good because he's a very seasoned photographer, an artist photographer. The principles of true art is not to show off a pretty picture, but to evoke emotions to let people feel something. George will be hoping he did just that with transgression. In sports news, Arsenal earlier today ended Manchester City's 12-match unbeaten run as the Gunners showed one of their best performances of the season so far to shut out the defending champions 2-0 at the Etihad Stadium. Spain playmaker Santi Cazorla converted a first-half penalty after Vincent Kompany fouled Nacho Monreal. Arsenal added a second after the break when Cazorla's free kick backed out Olivier Giroud and the France striker headed in home from close range. The result left City five points behind Premier League leaders Chelsea. Cazorla belts it in. And the Gunners lead on the territory of a big gun. Unused to finding a smile on this territory. Loving it. 25 minutes to play. Cazorla's free kick. Giroud, it's in, it's two. 
champions in turmoil. And the way from uh, sports news security has been heightened again in Europe. Uh, Belgium has urged Greece to extradite a man that they say is a suspect in a foiled terror attack on the country last week. A Belgian security forces had carried out a raid which killed uh, two people that they said were involved in planning an attack on the country's police. Guns, munitions and explosives and police uniforms and a large amount of money were all seized by police during the operation. However, there are no details on the detainee being sought, though there are suspicions he could be Abdel Hamid Aboud, the alleged leader of the cell that was planning the attack. Also, no link has been made between the terrorist plot in Belgium and the attacks in Paris. And the main news again. The federal government today reduced a pump price of petrol by 10 naira, that's from 70, 97 naira to 87 naira per litre. Minister of Petroleum Resources, Dezani Alison Madoke, this evening explained that the reduction became necessary as a result of the global crude oil price drop. Also today, five people were killed by a suicide bomber in Potuskom in Yobe State. The incident, which occurred at Bulala Motor Park, has left many families in mourning. I might want to say a prayer for those families tonight. Thanks for watching the News at 10. I am Amarachi Rani. Good night and enjoy the weekend.